Okay, so it's been a long time for devlogs. Here we have a brand new scene. This is the arcade mode. I've bailed in the 1980s st like style just now, just because I couldn't quite find that little zone of graphical fidelity, which is my thesis, um, without Bloom, and Bloom is costly um, within Unity itself if you've messed with the quality settings. So currently this scene here is not using the Valve renderer because that's depreciated, deprecated. Um, the other scene, with well, the main scene of the game is using the Valve renderer. But first of all, just let me go through this, because I made this one um, within like two days, and it's actually really fun. So, uh, although it doesn't really do anything just now, but bear with me. Like, you can see, there's only one texture here, and it's like, you can see all of the corners, all the vertices. And what it is, was I baked Ambient Occlusion, this tutorial on the channel I just released, actually. I baked Ambient Occlusion into a texture map, applied the texture map to the material on top of this um, isometric shape, and, uh, and I set the occlusion down just a little bit. I did say ambient occlusion, I think. I'm sure I did. And then uh, the same for this uh, like uh, platform here where the player can stand and then uh, two of the faces were deleted from this isometric shape. Um, not isometric shape. Uh, isohedron. Isohedron, I think it is. And uh, the player stands here and then shoots voids as they come flying at you. So the plan, the art AI behind this is going to be interesting. I've never done a flying AI before. Now you could do A star, but it seems a bit overly complicated for the, what it is. I mean, we only have one collider here and well, two really, which is just the arena itself. So I think what I'll actually do is I'll set up a bunch of nodes around the room and from the from the entrance, so the enemy will spawn, the void will spawn. It will then fly in and then rotate around nodes in a random direction, um, eventually come in, pot potentially firing lasers at the player, um, but I was thinking more of it's just getting closer and closer until eventually like it's captured the player, because that's kind of the, the, the style of it. So the, the void will eventually come in, navigate its way around the nodes, and then uh, it will uh, hopefully be killed by the player, um, but otherwise the player will uh, lose health. Um, maybe we could do it as protecting this pyramid. Um, trapeze we've got going on here, but the one thing I do have to model in Maya is the little, uh, a little like boundary, like a little um, a metal rail or something just around here, so the player doesn't feel like they're going to fall off the edge because it's quite, uh, it's quite weird looking down. So what I'll actually do is I'll run it. Um, I will drag over here. Uh, we are, it's quite good this because we can have a 2D bug mode. Um, this is just Valve's new VR renderer. Uh, so I've imported the, the arrow and a couple of balloons spawning here just so we can see what's going on. Um, so we're rendering here, and you just saw, like, if I look up, we're getting 230 frames. We're not going below 100. 120 is, anything over 120 is brilliant, because the refresh rate is at 120 hertz. So what I can do is switch it to VR and 2D. Um, I'll switch it to 2D just now. And uh, I'll go for a little play and see what it's like. I haven't played with this properly yet. I'm actually going to put the headphones on as well, so I can hear the balloons. So... I don't know if you can still see me. Doesn't matter. You can see the screen. So you can you can put it back down. You pull the trigger, put it up. You put it back in the trigger. There's like a collider around here that when you put your hand in, it comes out. Um, if you're having difficulty scaling with this thing, basically the, the, all of these like there's a lot of children in here. Now, if you're scaling the parent, it's actually attached to a prefab, and the prefabs aren't actually being changed. So what's actually happening is here the controller is going through a, tr a collider here, a trigger. And when it's uh, detecting it, I can pick it up. What it's actually doing is it's removing this object, this game object, because this is actually just absolutely nothing. It's just a model. And it then instantiates a brand new object into my hand from the from a prefab list. It then puts on this uh, little renderer, which is actually the model itself with like a, uh, uh, the outline, like Borderlands. So it's like a shader. And then we have this interactable model where on one hand we have, well, just, either hand can be, triggered it so in pull the trigger I, there is a checkbox you can add in unity that will actually enable it so you have to pull the trigger to pick it up and drop it down but at the moment it's just like you put it in and it pops off which is quite cool um so the the asset package does come with oh sorry so that's basically the gist of like the bow and arrow and how it works um i've already modified like a um i've already created my own bow it kind of looks pretty bad just now i haven't finished modeling it that'll be like for like a day or two projects i can make it look nice and good but i do want to have a bow because i think that it, 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 the bow feels really good, like, you can have guns, I'll show you that demo for Zoid in a second, um, but the bow, the bow feels good, it's different, it's VR, you don't usually see stuff like this. So, we're up here on this platform, it looks gorgeous, although it's so simple, you know, there is no uh, real-time rendering as well, so this is using real-time open, um, real open, real global lighting, and uh, it's going through, I think it's four, Light passes or something just now. Um, what we 
have is we have a bunch of light nodes around the room. I haven't specifically put them up. It's kind of this generic area that's hit. I mean, if we look at that cube over there, it's actually being lit on all four sides. Um, the other side is differently lit as well. We have this directional light that's coming in directly at, uh, sorry, directional light's coming in from over there, I believe. I mean, if we look at the shadow, you can see the, sh the, the hard shadow's not really aliased, but here it's anti-aliasing um, SAO by eight, which is pretty good. Like having that, because we have deferred rendering enabled, I think, I think we have deferred rendering enabled. Um, essentially gives us so much more like ability to um, add post-processing effects if we wanted. What I'm trying to do though is ensure graphical fidelity, so I'm trying to, you know, that's why I'm baking the textures, it's only one draw call rather than overlaying it and updating it every frame. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the physics are absolutely great in this. Like, this, the scale's really small, like, this is kind of smaller than the one in the lab renderer, but I'm okay with that because it means I can only have to do this. I don't know if you can see, I mean, you can. I, I'm only moving my hand like maybe half a, half a sensor of ruler, 15 centimeters. Um, and before you know, you get a sore arm going by like this. Um, so the way the way this works is it's quite cool. If I just move the the the, th the arrow down here, you'll see uh, there it's kind of being magnetized. Like it's a little magnet. It's trying to clamp it to this position right there. You can see it's really really quite cool. I was looking at the code behind it, and all of these things are using pooling. I mean, it's super easy to do. Um, the, my system's already using a pooling system, so. Um, but the thing is though, they've just released all of these cool features and like ability to flip through menus and um, swatch, I'll load it up in a second. This might be longer than I anticipated, but there's a lot to cover, there's a lot of really cool things. So, um, the I've actually already created a, a series of UI um, that you can interact with in the Vive. And if I actually just uh, back out of here. Okay, so we're I've loaded up um, the Zoid VR, which is, uh, da -da 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 -da, here we are, it's using the Valve renderer. Um, now. Lighting at the top here. Um, I'm putting the wrong screen. Lighting at the top here. You can see this isn't this this isn't lit at all. Like all those all those sides look the same. Uh, from I'm trying to space it. Okay, screw it. I'll go back to it. And basically, what that is is that's because we don't have any nodes up here. Uh, we don't have any light nodes. And the way it's rendering all of the uh, the the shadows and such in this in the in this scene is actually it's using the valve render system, which is limiting in a lot of ways. Um, you have a set texture map. It, it basically renders emulates shadows by rendering shadows to a text map, light map, and that resolution is maxed at 8126 or 8164. Um, but if I put this on, um, you, should, you probably hear the game audio already. Yeah, so I don't remember, uh, shout out to Chris, made the, uh, made the audio. So as we can see here, I have a UI system already created here. Here on this, uh, let me say left, left hand. We have a menu, we can flick through the menu, the controller is haptic feedback for as you flick through it, um, you fire a bullet through and it happens. Now VR, they've just released a brand, uh, like a, that whole asset pack that has all of this implemented already. Um, there's the cube, so that cube there, see it's not lit in any side, it just kind of looks kind of plain. That's because there's not enough textures, there's no light nodes over there which means there's nothing to render, but also I'm pretty sure if I did put any light nodes up here in this area, rather than down there where the game is, it actually wouldn't have enough um, uh, space to do it. Now the thing I like about this game is, as we can see here, I'm sitting down and I can still play. I can still play this game seated, which is great. I like standing up, so I'm gonna. And then this area here, as you can see, it kind of it fits um, the actual play space of the game. So arcade mode would kind of be that bow and arrow thing, something along those lines. I haven't worked on it too much, um, but that'll be that mode. Uh, my thesis is on graphical fidelity. As you can see, the frames on the screen better than me, so I'll probably look back at this later. Um, yeah. Uh, and it's smooth, like everything's smooth, it feels great. Whether or not it's going to be a noticeable impact compared to the other scene, who knows. Um, so the music isn't on a loop, so you look down and you're like, oh shit, you're falling, and it's still kind of weird. So these, now this is a, a bug I've had. As we can see here, they're not lit. These look really flat. They're not very good looking at all, if I'm honest. Um, and this is all because of, I'm running out of textures to, uh, sorry, I'm running out, I've run out of space on the texture maps that are rendering all the shadows. I mean, there's not even any shadow coming down from this guy. Perhaps they haven't finished rendering, but oh no, it's probably, these guys have shadows coming off them, so it's a high chance that the shadows distance isn't rendering for high, further enough. Um, you're gonna have to check that out. I mean, I didn't know this was a thing. I, I haven't been on this game for quite a while. Um, so this one's a boss. Um, you won't recognize it from 
anything else. Ah, uh, there's no help just yet, but what you can see is every kill I get, the meter fills. And what this allows me to do is call in kill streaks. Um, so, douche. And all the physics are interactable and stuff like that. Um, so, we've got three ways. We've got a score, 2800. You get more for melees, you get less for shooting. Um, and I think it's like, what? 25 and 50 versus. So if I shock them, all, all of their shells come off. We've got a boss here, takes three hits, just like all the boys have their little shells on. Um, so that's the way I think of it as like, these guys have shells and then the, the blue things are the, are the actual aliens inside the shells. But it's quite cool, like, they bounce off each other, so all the colliders and physics are there. So if I like, hit one, oh shit, I just clicked my debug. They're gonna spawn twice as much now, I think, yeah. I set it up for debugging reasons. If I squeeze the controller's handle, it will um, actually teleport me back up, just so I can practice that animation going up and down. But yeah, as we can see here, uh, the lighting in the scene is pretty bad. Uh, just now, it's not that great, but it's smooth. You know, the game feels good. I, I mean, I'm being finicky. I mean, the, av the average VR player might not actually notice it. It'll probably be fine for them. But I've been in this scene quite a lot, so I can't actually pause it. So I'm going to leave these guys. They should just no clip through the floor if I don't hit them with the sword when they build up. So, um, as we can see here, the shadow in the corners are so sharp, like, the, there's no anti-aliasing on this scene at all. Up there, you, you, can, you can't notice it in the distance. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I haven't actually thought about it too much, actually. I mean, it was a huge process in my thesis about how anti-aliasing isn't really a feature in this because we don't have the first rendering on and HDR isn't enabled. Um, but if we look at this, I can actually walk over, we can actually see how sharp the shadow is. That's what these are, by the way. These two cubes here are just there just for um, lighting purposes. And as we can see, it is dynamic because the shadows are moving with it along with all the voids. Um, and the next thing I need to add is a haptic feedback. So we have uh, the, the. Oh, okay. I don't know what's going on there. I'm losing connection. Uh, so when you hit it hard, you know, the back corner control will vibrate just as hard. Um, I've already got the code written out for that, well, pseudo code written out for it. It's just quite easy. Um, and I have the controllers all linked up to one of the scripts, so. Uh, so. So so far it's quite good. The game's good. And this is the pooling, object pooling that comes in and stuff. So the I originally it did have a bug where um, when the boss would fall off the map because the enemies kept building up, this platform was much smaller. Um, what would actually happen was that the the wave would always just wait even when you killed all of them, it wouldn't end because the way this boss is coded is that what I, you actually do is, it's the same as these guys, um, it instantiates another void in front of them. So if I kill this guy, it then actually instantiates three voids in front of it. Um, oh, these guys are quick. And uh, the reason they would fall off the map is, is because it would use the wave camera and say, okay, there's gonna be 20 enemies this wave. Um, so if there's 20 enemies, that means when the players kill 20 enemies, stop, start the new wave. Um, but actually what would happen was, I would always be on 17 or 16, um, because, 17 really, because there's three enemies that spawn. So it was waiting for three enemies. I had to offset the total kills by three, because if he fell off the map, then I wouldn't get it. But then if he didn't fall off the map, I would get it too early. So then I left it for like a week. It wasn't a bug, it wasn't a major issue, but this is just kind of part of the dev process, because I was working on my exams at the time. And then when I came back to it, what actually happened was, I just thought, why don't I just make a method, a function, that just runs every frame and sees if, it, if there's any enemy game objects alive with the tag enemy. And then when that equals zero, it means the wave's over, which is awesome. I mean, technically, it's just thinking about it now. If I killed them all as they were still spawning, and the period of time it takes for another one to spawn, it's actually possible that it would actually just start the new wave, even though it's not finished. Um, seems highly unlikely, but they're bloody fast. I mean, that's the end of the spawning, and the new wave won't start until they kill these two. So. Um, but yeah, I know, it's just kind of like the process of going through the dev, the dev cycle, you could say. Um, so, high score will be displayed there, I think. Here's just kind of like a little thing where it's like, look down. You look down, it's just this white platform. The white platform splits, you fall down to the bottom. So you're getting that kind of um, belly drop feeling that you get. Uh, other than that, everything's going pretty good. It feels good. Shock all those guys, and you can see all their shells pop off. Um, health isn't doing anything for some reason. Uh, 
they don't kill Squeak. Um, the controls, the controllers were interesting because I did originally have guns and stuff, but I didn't like it. Uh, this actually feels more natural because it feels like the controllers I'm holding. So this here is like awesome. Isn't that the trigger? But oh well, I have this trigger on this hand, the sword, linked up to the bullet on this hand. That wasn't intentional, but I like it because this trigger wasn't being used for anything else. Oh, he could go rapid fire. I like that. It's a feature. Haha, <laughs> that's baller. I like it. What's actually doing is it doesn't even know what control is firing. It's just knowing when a trigger is pulled, it's going to fire. Awesome. So, I've got optimization steps to do where the bullet gets destroyed. I've also got a save behind the score up here. I've also got to code the extra waves down there and actually make it so your propel from the controller will go down when the enemies come too close. Um, once that's done, I'll transfer it over to the cool bullet arrow down where we got rocket on. But other than that, I think we're gold. Uh, yeah, it's going to be on Steam soon. I think the actual... Um oh, look at the graphics. We're on 70 frames just now. I mean, I don't notice that in game, which is good, but I think it's because we've got so many bullets being spawned and such. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm going to call that a devlog. It was long, but it was overdue. Hope it was interesting, and I'll see you in the next one.